Mattathiahu chapter 1. The book of the genealogy of Yahushua Messiah, son of Daud, son of Abraham. Abraham brought forth Yitzhak, and Yitzhak brought forth Yaakov, and Yaakov brought forth Yehuda and his brothers, and Yehuda brought forth Peretz and Zerah by Tamar, and Peretz brought forth Hetzron, and Hetzron brought forth Ram, and Ram brought forth Aminadab, and Aminadab brought forth Nashon, and Nashon brought forth Salmon, and Salmon brought forth Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz brought forth Obed by Ruth, and Obed brought forth Yeshay, and Yeshay brought forth Daud the sovereign. And Daud the sovereign brought forth Shalomo by Uriah's wife. And Shalomo brought forth Rehoboam. And Rehoboam brought forth Abiah. And Abiah brought forth Asa. And Asa brought forth Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat brought forth Uran. And Uran brought forth Uzziah. And Uzziah brought forth Yotham. And Yotham brought forth Ahaz. And Ahaz brought forth Hizkiahu, and Hizkiahu brought forth Manasseh, and Manasseh brought forth Amon, and Amon brought forth Yoshiahu, and Yoshiahu brought forth Yekinah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babel. And after the exile to Babel, Yekinah brought forth Shetel, and Shetel brought forth Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel brought forth Abihud. And Abihud brought forth Eliakim. And Eliakim brought forth Azor. And Azor brought forth Sadok. And Sadok brought forth Akim. And Akim brought forth Elihud. And Elihud brought forth Eleazar. And Eleazar brought forth Matin. And Matin brought forth Yaakov. And Yaakov brought forth Yosef the husband of Miriam, of whom was born Yehusha, who is called Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to Daud were 14 generations. And from Daud until the exile to Babel were 14 generations. And from the exile to Babel until the Messiah were 14 generations. But the birth of Yehusha Messiah was as follows. After his mother Miriam was engaged to Yosef, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant from the set-apart spirit. And Yosef, her husband, being righteous and not wishing to make a show of her, had in mind to put her away secretly. But while he thought about this, see, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to him in a dream, saying, Yosef, son of Daud, do not be afraid to take Miriam as your wife, for that which is in her was brought forth from the set-apart spirit. And she shall give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Yahusha, for he shall save his people from their sins. And all this came to be in order to fill what was spoken by Yahuwah through the prophet, saying, See, a maiden shall conceive, and she shall give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means El with us. And Yosef, awaking from his sleep, did as the messenger of Yahuwah commanded him, and took his wife, but knew her not until she gave birth to her son the firstborn, and he called his name Yehusha. Chapter 2 And Yehusha, having been born in Bethlehem of Yehuda in the days of Herod's the sovereign, see, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born sovereign of the Yehudim? For we saw his star in the east and have come to do reverence to him. And Herod the sovereign, having heard, was troubled, 
and all Jerusalem with him. And having gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Yehuda, for thus it has been written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Yehuda, you are by no means least among the rulers of Yehuda. For out of you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod's the sovereign, having called the Magi secretly, learned exactly from them what time the star appeared. And having sent them to Bethlehem, he said, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me so that I too may go and do reverence to him. And having heard the sovereign, they went. And see, the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And seeing the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Miriam, his mother, and fell down and did reverence to him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod's, they departed for their own country by another way. And when they had left, see, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to Yosef in a dream, saying, Arise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Mitzrayim, and remain there until I bring you word. For Herod is about to seek the child to destroy him. And rising up, he took the child and his mother by night and departed from Mitzrayim and remained there until the death of Herod's to fill what was spoken by Yahuwah through the prophet saying, out of Mitzrayim I have called my son. Then Herod's, having seen that he was fooled by the Magi, was greatly enraged and he sent forth and slew all the male children in Bethlehem and in all its borders from two years old and under, according to the time which he had exactly learnt from the Magi. Then was filled what was spoken by Yermiyahu the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and weeping in great mourning, Rahel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they were no more. And Herod's having died, see, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared in a dream to Yosef in Mitzrayim, saying, Arise and take the child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for those seeking the life of the child are dead. And rising up, he took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But hearing that Archelaus was reigning over Yehuda instead of his father Herod's, he was afraid to go there. And having been warned in a dream, he departed for the parts of Galil, and came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, thus to fill what was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Chapter 3 And in those days, Yohanan the Immerser came proclaiming in the wilderness of Yehuda, and saying, Repent, for the reign of the heavens has come near. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Yeshiyahu, saying, A voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Yahuwah, make his paths straight. And Yohanan, having a garment of camel's hair and a leather girdle around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey, then Yerushalayim, and all Yehuda, and all the country around the garden, went out to him, and they were immersed by him in the garden, confessing their sins. And seeing many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his immersion, he said to them, Brood of adders, who has warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Bear, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, 
and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that Elohim is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And the axe is already laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, then, which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed immerse you in water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you in the set-apart spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand. He shall thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the storehouse. But the chaff he shall burn with unquenchable fire. Then Yahushua came to Galil, to Yohanan, at the Yarden, to be immersed by him. But Yohanan was hindering him, saying, I need to be immersed by you, and you come to me? But Yahushua, answering, said to him, Permit it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. And having been immersed, Yahushua went up immediately from the water, and see, the heavens were opened, and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and coming upon him, and see, a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I did delight. Chapter 4 then Yahushua was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tried by the devil. And after having fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the trier came and said to him, If you are the son of Elohim, command that these stones become bread. But he, answering, said, It has been written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. Then the devil took him up into the set-apart city and set him on the edge of the set-apart place and said to him, If you are the son of Elohim, throw yourself down. For it has been written, He shall command his messengers concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. And Yahushua said to him, It has also been written, You shall not try, Yahuwah, your Elohim. Again the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the reins of the world and their esteem and said to him, All these I shall give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Yahushua said to him, Go, Shaitan, for it has been written, You shall worship Yahuwah your Elohim, and him alone you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and see, messengers came and attended him. And Yahushua, having heard that Yohanan had been put in prison, withdrew into Galil, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Kephar Nehum, which is by the sea, in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, to fill what was spoken by Yeshiahu the prophet, saying, Land of Zebulon and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Arden, Galil of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness saw a great light, and upon those who sat in the land and shadow of death, light arose to them. From that time, Yahushua began to proclaim and to say, Repent, for the reign of the heavens has drawn near. And Yahushua, walking by the sea of Galil, saw two brothers, Shimon, called Kepha, and Andri, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I shall make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
and going on from there, he saw two other brothers, Yaakov, the son of Zebdai, and Yohanan, his brother, in the boat with Zebdai, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Yahushua went about all Galil, teaching in their congregations and proclaiming the good news of the rain and healing every disease and every bodily weakness among the people. And news about him went out into all Syria, and they brought to him all who were sick, afflicted with various diseases and pains, and those who were demon-possessed, and epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And large crowds from Galil and Decapolis and Jerusalem and Yehuda and beyond the garden, followed him. Chapter 5 But when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his taught ones came to him. And having opened his mouth, he was teaching them, saying, Baruch are the poor in spirit, because theirs is the reign of the heavens. Baruch are those who mourn, because they shall be comforted. Baruch are the meek, because they shall inherit the earth. Baruch are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, because they shall be filled. Baruch are the compassionate, because they shall obtain compassion. Baruch are the clean in heart, because they shall see Elohim. Baruch are the peacemakers, because they shall be called sons of Elohim. Baruch are those persecuted for righteousness' sake, because theirs is the reign of the heavens. Baruch are you when they reproach and persecute you and falsely say every wicked word against you for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, because your reward in the heavens is great. For in this way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You were the salt of the earth, but if the salt becomes tasteless, how shall it be seasoned? For it is no longer of any use, but to be thrown out and to be trodden down by men. You are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it shines to all those in the house. Let your light so shine before men, so that they see your good works, and praise your Father who is in the heavens. Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to complete. For truly I say to you, till the heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the reign of the heavens. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that whoever is wroth with his brother without a cause shall be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be liable to the Sanhedrin. But whoever says, you fool, shall be liable to the fire of Gehenna. If then you bring your gift before the altar, and there remember that your brother holds whatever against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go, first make peace with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Be well-minded 
with your opponent promptly while you were on the way with him, lest your opponent deliver you to the judge and the judge to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Truly I say to you, you shall by no means get out of there until you have paid the last penny. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone looking at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it away from you. For it is better for you that one of your members perish than for your entire body to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away from you. For it is better for you that one of your members perish than for your entire body to be thrown into Gehenna. And it has been said, whoever puts away his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever puts away his wife, except for the matter of whoring, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who has been put away commits adultery. Again, you heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to Yahuwah. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by the heaven, because it is Elohim's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great sovereign, nor swear by your head, because you are not able to make one hair white or black, but let your yea be yea and your no be no. And what goes beyond these is from the wicked one. You heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the wicked. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. And he who wishes to sue you and take away your inner garment, let him have your outer garment as well. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you, and from him who wishes to borrow from you, do not turn away. You heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Baruch those cursing you, do good to those hating you, and pray for those insulting you and persecuting you so that you become sons of your father in the heavens, because he makes his son rise on the wicked and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those loving you, what reward have you? Are the tax... All right, shalom, 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 shalom. I don't see my man Daryl doing hell, um, but... I guess we'll go ahead and get it started. Taurus, <clears throat> Taurus, you got anything, Ken? Uh, no, all praises to Yahweh, and it's an honor to be here. And much appreciation. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Man. What about you, um, Jim? Y'all should be, man. You got anything you want to bring out? Dork matter, the return of dork matter. <clears throat> Eric White was missing for a minute, y'all should be. Yeah, he called me um, a couple days ago. No, last week about getting him that Bible. So he's been, he been around. It's supposed to be getting here next uh, Tuesday, so we'll see. The one with the uh, proper name and the apocrypha and everything in it. So I found him one. Yeah, we ain't see Dark Matter in a minute. Welcome back. Shalom. Dark Matter be in and out, man. <clears throat> uh, shalom to all the brethren and folks out there who are in this truth and those that have an interest 
and knowing what that is. Where's Marty Mon, man? Where's the man Marty Mon? Marty Mon. Well, hopefully he ain't held up by them boulders, man. <laughs> you already know. And keep them busy. No. Hope not, man. Um, Daryl Thornhill, man. I sent him the link also, man. Daryl. Daryl's a good reader, man. He's a good guy, too, man. Good guy, man. Oh, yeah. Most I like that brother in the kingdom. That's a really good dude, man. Jimmy Wine dude, man. It's hard to find dudes like that anymore. Con. Man, he got a lot of respect, man. He's taking it in stride. That's 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 a good look. I see. I peeped that a minute ago. He's like Torres, man. It's hard to find a Torres, man. So the fun of Yaya Bay, man. They don't make them like that anymore. Real talk. People are different, man. Yeah, so last night, man, I was talking a little bit about the um, trial. We're going to go more into it tonight about how this man's laws is stolen from the laws of the Most High. That's all he's done. He's taking the Most High's laws and, and twisted it and try and make it, you know, his law. Am I coming through clear? Crystal. Uh, yeah. Trying to make it his laws, you know? Um, that's what this system, I mean, essentially that's how Esau is. When we say Esau, we're talking about the higher and the echelons. We're not talking about you average and so on and so forth. They don't give a damn about you either, man. And some of you, you're foolish enough to go against us. Because this man is uh, manipulating your mind as well. But you're going to get your reward. You understand? You're going to get your reward for listening to him. He, he got many of you thinking just because, you know, um, your skin doesn't have a lot of pigmentation that you're better. That's a sick individual that thinks something like that. You know, but um, these are the people that control the world. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, he, he created a system of laws called Roman civics. But Roman civics was still was stolen from our laws, which is the, the laws of the Torah, the Tanakh, and, and the Septuagint, the laws of the Most High. And, you know, I was showing a little bit of that last night. I'm going to go into it a little more tonight. I was really um, sleeping there last night. Sometimes I'd be functioning just off, uh, I don't know, man, like a, I guess just off of um, oxygen. It's just I'm here, but sometimes I'm just just keeping it going, just strictly off of determination, man. Con. I always said I'll sleep when I die, man. People don't understand that, but um, I'm finding out most people that sleep a lot are also broke and they're struggling. Yep. Those, those are the same people that's talking about what they don't have. <laughs> and love to blame Aisha Adawan for everything. Not that he hasn't orchestrated everything because he's controlling the world right now. But there is a way out if you have faith. You gotta have faith. So with that, you know, being said, I surmise, <clears throat> so go ahead and get started here. Um, so we appreciate everyone for tuning in. Um, you know, we say shout shalom to all of the believing Israelites and to um, everyone that on the outside looking in, we ask you again, what are you waiting for to come in? What are you waiting for to come in? Um, but, but with that being said, y'all should be, there was an email that I sent out this morning, another um, <clears throat> brother, 
brother is saying he, you know, um, he wants to join um, T Dot. We know how that go, man. We don't know what that'll come to. Yep. You know no. Time for background checks and all now, because folks Come on. just never know, man. Just never, never know, man. Like I say, man, they don't make them like Yah Yah Bay anymore, man. <clears throat> Get my screen right here, man. Screen. Did he ever respond later? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just sent him something. I just asked him why, you know, he want to join. Got to really ask people that question now. Like, why, why, you know, why you want to join? <clears throat> we don't want another, you know, quadruple um, Pete. How many times have these dudes, like, Join and we, we we know what it goes to, man. We know what happens <clears throat> after they're you know join up for a while, get what they want. They come in for commerce. Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I, I surmise I'm supposed to be stupid. Like I can't see any of this. But all praises to the Most High for the diligent believers, the people that's really taking this serious. Um, you know, the people that. Realize that the most high is real, right? So what I would like to do tonight, now people hear us say all of the time, and particularly I will always tell people, if you don't accept the most high and his son, if you don't accept Hamashiach as savior, this doesn't work for you. You'll get a little bit of results, but you don't get the kind of results that I um, get. When I be saying it's Yahweh's work, they think that's just some sort of slogan, I mean, I should be, or some sort of aphorism that I'm just using. They don't realize that this is real, man. This is real. Yeah, this is absolutely. truly the work of the Most High and His Son. Everything is through the Ruach. They always hear us talking about the Ruach. There, there's a lot of people that came over here, man, and um, you, you don't appreciate the things that you've actually learned over here. Like the dude Melika, man. Man, Most High, um, curse that um, demon, man. He, he's nothing but a damn demon. Because we help you, man. But, and that incenses me, man. I try to keep keep my composure, man. But that thing keeps bothering my spirit. Well, how we looked out for him, man. And his ass is down and out a few times. Then you forget that, man. You, you don't have no honor, man. What's kind of people don't have no honor, man? No, no damn honor. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I have no, I have no more words for that. Uh because it's, it's it's ridiculous. But I mean, we, we put ourselves out there, especially you, for a lot of folks, man. Like, folks are just caught up on, I guess, what you look like on YouTube. Because, I mean, again, before the pandemic, when you was having the seminars and traveling, you always giving something away, man. There was one time, there was more than one time where... He paid for everybody's dang on uh, um, food during one of the lunch breaks at the seminar. Cool. About 25 to 40 people. Con, I could co sign to that. Con, you know, they, they go, uh, he, he don't need it. You know, they look at it like that. People take things for granted, man. So I want to say this to everyone I don't care where you are how hard things may be, how difficult it may be, how dark things may seem. If you believe, if you have faith in Hamashiach, man, you could you could rise out of that condition. I'm not just saying something, man, um, to make you feel good. I'm, I'm saying that because it's real. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, I got this thing in, man. Um, for this uh, IDE cable. The SATA cable, man. I have oh. an old flash drive with a lot of information. Not flash drive, external hard drive that the um, end of it broke off. So I got to use this um, this SATA attachment to get the information off of there. I have a lot of old videos and material on that, man. Going way back to 2013. Oh, yeah. I, so can't, I can't, can't get it off the drive, man. <laughs> can't wait for those re uploads. Heck yeah. Yeah. You know, some of them I couldn't, um, you know, they won't let me upload them. That's what they was flagging my channels for. But um, 
It is what it is, man. Um, I, I want to say this, man. I don't. If, if you're suffering right now, it's your fault. It's because of your decision making. It's no one else's fault. If you're in a, you're in a bad relationship and someone's abusing you, that's your fault also. Because you didn't make the right decision. You always are given an indication that something's wrong. So when we stop looking externally for why we're in the conditions that we're in and we start looking at ourselves, then and only then will things change. Pardon me, I haven't been drinking enough water, man. But um I've been I've been reiterating this. If someone around you is just exhibiting a lot of negative energy. They're really cynical, negative, naysaying, putting a lot of um, negative um, energy, just, I mean, everything, they look at it from a negative perspective. That person is on a lower level of vibration. And if you, were, if you remain around that person, you will be on that same level of vibration. So in 2009, you know, when I told many of my family members, my associates, my so-called friends, I'm like, yo, part of my back. Because I'm done, I'm done dealing with people like you. Part of my back. They thought I was, they thought I was playing. I pump faking or something. I'm like part of my back. And a lot of those people I still don't talk to this very day, man. In 2009, man, I decided to change my life. I stopped working in the system. I, I had what people would um, consider to be, you know, um, successful jobs, man. L living okay. You know, I was coordinated administrator for, for the city of New York, Kings County. And I, I was a manager, computer architectural for the city of Manhattan. So I was getting paid pretty good, but still felt like a slave and still was being ordered around. And so I told him, I was like, man, I don't like this. This, this dude right here, this director is telling me what to do. And he don't even know how to run this network. I got, I'm always coming to his computer and fixing things for him. And he's telling me, me what to do because he got an MBA. But I'm smarter than him. I'm running this whole operation. This building that they put me in, man, there was plenty of people. He was like, I'm going to tell you, man, I hired you because um, I've had plenty of people here before and they're trying to set up a network in this building and they just couldn't get it to network right. I pulled it off. And when I pulled that off, he offered me another job, man. That's how I got the that's how I got the job at John Jay. It was because of my performance. But it still didn't feel right. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I wasn't on my purpose. I was still searching, like a lot of you. A lot of you going in the nine to five. I was on salary. So no matter how much they worked me. I didn't get a penny more, and they was working me, man. So in 2009, I decided to change my life. I walked away from everything. I walked away from everything in 2009. What inspired that is my cousin, Marcus. I went over to the East River Projects, man, in Harlem. Same, same projects. I used to stay in those projects for a while, man. But um, I, I got beefing with my um, girl in Brooklyn. I, I, went, I stayed over there for a minute. Right? In East River. They call it Killer First. First Avenue. Right between First Avenue and the FDR. East River Projects. Projects that K. Slade grew, grew up in. That Alpa grew up in. Body count over there is crazy. But um, nevertheless, 
one day I went over there from Brooklyn and um, Mark was watching some video stuff on Lore. I'm like, well, what you watching? He said, yo, just pay attention. Uh, yo, you just pay attention because I'm about to teach you something. So um, I started watching and I'm listening and listening. And this stuff, it, it just clicked. And this guy was talking about discharging things. And I saw how he was challenging the constables on patrol and winning. And, and the guy was talking some high powered law stuff. And I'm like, wow, is this dude a lawyer? He's like, nah, he's not a lawyer. He's reciting a common law. And so from that day right there, I say, yo man, I just found out what I'm supposed to be doing in life. That's what, this is what I'm supposed to be doing right here. So when I went in Monday morning, I didn't give him a two week notice. I just went in to tell him, yo, I quit. I told the director, I didn't like how you was walking me anyways. You ain't no shit. I, I let all of them know how I really felt. I said, you was using me like a slave. So I quit. As you got two weeks notice, I ain't giving you shit. So I told him, so you, you, you're never going to get hired in New York again. I said, I don't need you up here again. I'm not coming back into the system. This is 2009, man. 2009. You had to have a heart to do that, man, because it was very scary in the back of my mind. I didn't really know what I was going to do, how, how I was going to make a living, but I told myself, despite how hard it gets, I'm not going back into the system. I'm not going back. So I, walk, I walked away from two jobs, man, getting paid very well, according to some people. Then I decide I'm going to move out west. My brother said to move out west. He's like, yo, man, I just bought a house. I made 70 G's off of it. Move out here and get you a house. By the time I packed everything up, man, and had to try and transport things from the East Coast, from New York, all the way to Las Vegas, that costed thousands of dollars, man. My brother told me that the woman that he was dealing with at the time was a manager at the casino, and she could get you a job at IT. I said, I bet, but I really don't want to work in that film anymore. So when I went out there, she was lying. She couldn't get the job. They was like, yeah, we know her, but she don't have no pull in this section. So it's like, you know what, man? I'm not working in the system anymore. Two weeks later, I got 35 cents to my name. Y'all done move from coast to coast. My brother told me, yo, you could use my car when you get out here, man. Couldn't have find out, man. I couldn't use this car. Him and, him and that woman was going through something. They beefing. So now he, I, I just moved out here. He got to come over here and stay with me. I don't even have a just over broke, man. I got to figure this thing out. But in the meantime, I'm studying and studying and studying, man. I'm telling you, this is what the real grind be like, man. So when someone trying to come over and tell me how hard you get it, man, I don't want to hear it. And things just kept going from bad to worse, man. So I had 35 cents, man, in a dream. So, so you guys think you got it bad? I had 35 cents in a dream. But I already knew what I was supposed to do, man. I said, I'm supposed to study this stuff by hand, man. And I'm supposed to teach people this. He said, man, you got a degree in IT. Why don't you just go ahead and get a job, man? I could get you a, go a government job like me working for the government. I said, nah, I'm good. I'm not walking back in the system anymore. People laughing at me. Things got really bad, man. Things, things went from bad to worse. Now, my brother talked me into moving out to the West Coast. I'm out there for about four months. Boom. He got a promotion offer. He moves back to the East Coast of Pennsylvania just to get promoted. I don't know nobody out here. 
But I said, I'm not going back to that. I met some chick out there. Now that go. I ended up the long and the shortest. I ended up staying out to the Vegas three and a half, almost four years. I'm starting to get things back together. So now I'm putting the law stuff together. I haven't worked in the system anymore. I started training people on the side, man, because I was a certified personal trainer in New York also when they had those New York fitness clubs. I used to work at the one on Wall Street and the one in Herald Square. So I was training people off the books, trying to eat. I made enough, man. I was like, ain't nothing out here for me, man. So I eventually went back to New York. By the time I got the, back to New York, that's when Yasha Bean uh, eventually saw me on, do, on, on talk show with a group of people, helping people for free. So for the next three years, I'm grinding. I'm training people, doing what I can just to get by. I'm not working in the system. Everything's all for the books, man. This is my life. Was it easy? Nah, it wasn't easy. There were some times I didn't, I had to sleep on the train when I got back to the city. Nobody knew, man. I had like, I had a place to stay. I was sleeping on the train. I would ride the train all night. Ain't telling nobody nothing. I'm riding the train all the way from Brooklyn, man, all the way uptown to the last stop in the Bronx, all night, back and forth. I'm seeing cats and everybody get robbed on the train, all that. But I never went back. I said, I can't go back, man. I gotta make this work. This gotta work. I didn't have no plan B. Because to me, what I learned, everyone that had a plan B always planned to fail. Because if you got a plan B, you're anticipating your plan A not working. I said, it's got to work. Malik and I was saying, man, that nigga, you stupid, man. You had two good jaws, man. Why are you doing this to yourself? I said, man, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I looked him dead in the eye, man, and said, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, man. I said, man, I left here with 35 cents and a dream. He said, yeah, man, but you're teaching people for free, man. You should be charging them. I said, no, not yet, man. Three years. Three and a half years, I'm, I'm helping people for free, and they was getting remedy. They was getting remedy. I said, um, yo, man, I'm going to do what hasn't been done, man. Mark, my cousin that introduced me to this, he didn't have the heart. He knew a lot. When we first started doing the talk shoe shows, he was on talk show with me, man. But when they started to threaten us, because the boys in blue started to threaten us, man, we started getting approached. Literally getting approached, man. There was a precinct right there on 99th, man, and 3rd Avenue, man. I remember one day I was coming from my MMA class. There's a new revolution I mean, A class that I used to go to right there. On 99th and 3rd Avenue, there's a precinct right there. Some narcs rolled up on me. It's like, yo, you going out of town this weekend? I'm thinking, I thought they were stick-up kids because they didn't flash no badges or nothing. They ain't playing clothes. So I'm like, this, these dudes trying to take my heart. I'm like, nah, ain't not this weekend. Maybe next weekend. So I'm playing a war. And then they brought out their badges. And say, yo, we watching you. And as soon as you itch, we're going to be there to scratch you. So I, I wasn't going to let them put no fear in my heart. I was like, yo, my man, I'm glad you're watching. Because I'm about to go over to Killer First right there in the East River Projects, man. And somebody just got body last night. It makes me feel a little bit safe to know that the police is watching me. Then they laugh, and I gave them a smirk, and I slid off. And when I went over there and told Mark that, Mark never showed his face on camera again. He got shook to death. So all, when we first started off, there was about seven of us. After that incident, when I told them that, they started dropping like leaves from a tree. Mark, you, you could hear him in some of my old videos talking on the sideline. But he wouldn't show his face anymore. And to make things worth, 
Worse, 5 0 start turning it up. People in the back, man, and East River out there playing dominoes, they rolling up on cats. Trying to put fear in your heart. But I kept going. Even Mark, the one that introduced me to this, was like, yo, uh, yo, man, you, yo, man, you, you, gonna, you gonna get go to jail. So check this out, King, man. My, my dude, look around, man. We already in jail, man. You in the damn project. We already in jail, man. You, 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 you can't, you can't go from point A to point B without that piece of plastic. That's what you believe because that's what they taught you. You already know that it's not like that, dude. So why would you want? Why would you not want to wake people up and show them the truth? I told him, yo, man, I stand for the truth, man. You, you know a lot, man, but you don't have the heart that I have. So I told the dude, man, it's like, yo, I'm gonna take this, man, to new height. And he was laughing. Oh, yeah, you're going to go to jail and so on and so forth. So I said, listen, man, I'm going to do this despite what? He said, nah, man, you can't do it. And then that's what resonate with me, man. There's something that my father told me, man, that always stuck with me, man. My father died mad. My, my father died young. But whenever he would hear me say, y'all can't do that, he would always say, I can't has never been done. I didn't understand it then when I was a young boy, but I understand it now. All of you that say you can't do something, that's never going to happen because that's a self-defeating thought process that you're never going to overcome because you already told yourself that you can't. If you've already convinced yourself that you can't, you could best believe it's never going to get done, man. I can't has never been done. Why? Because you already say you can't. You've already fell. How could you ever be in the theater of the arena with your arms, your, your arm raised if you already told yourself you can't? That, that right there, that's a recipe for failure. That's the perfect recipe for disaster. And that's how most people think, man. Or all you say, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm stressing. It's your mindset. You, you're supposed to be in control of your mind, man. That shows that you have little faith. Because if you have faith in your Yahweh Shah, you could do anything. Someone get Isaiah 54 and 17, man. They was coming at me. You, you got demons like Melakar. He smiled on my face. Do you wicked, man? After all we done for you, man? I call you out. You wicked, man. And made a curses of the most high range down on you, man. All that love we was showing you, and it's been person after person. You smile on my face, but you trying to snake me, man. But no weapon, man. No weapon that they brought against me has prospered yet. Because this is the this is your house work, man. And they can't stop it. Jealous ones, they come around, they envy. But I'm still standing on all 10, man. But both in the air. And stand, I told them, man. I believe in my Bible, but I also believe in my heat. And when if it pop off, I pray that the most high bless me to shoot straight. I never back down, man. I'm a warrior, man. Cats be thinking they want it, man, until they look in my eyes and see that I'm really ready to lay down my life for this. So I can't move on, man, because there's a lot of snakes out here, man. And they want to assassinate my character. They come and they smile on your face. Then they moving real funny, real funny style. They go and tell your man's trying to form a confederacy against you because they got envy in their heart. That's a Judas, man. That's a Judas. But you can't stop this, man. This is your house plan, not mine, man. Someone got that Isaiah 54 and 17, I think it is. Uh, Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapons that is formed against me 
you shall prosper. And you, you, you hear that, boy? You hear that, Melika? I don't give a damn what you bring, man. You can't stand nobody knew who is you, man. Nobody knew you, homeboy, until you came around me, man. Most of you dudes that came in for commerce, you come under the guise like you really want to live the life of the truth, man. A, a true adept would be ready to lay down his life for his brother, man. We showed you nothing but love, man. You got, you got hate in your heart, man. God. My light was too bright for you, man. When you came around me, you should have been wearing some damn sunglasses because my life is too damn bright for you, boy. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? So he envy, man. Every time I would do something, y'all should be, this dude was doing it, man. Marty pointed it out to me. Kahan, Marty said, Kahan, the picture that you took, when you got the toy in your hand, he wouldn't took one. He put a prayer shot on. <laughs> Yeah, I remember you saying that, man. I, I mean, I took it in, I took it in stride. Like, okay, well, maybe it's just someone you know who's sincere. But time tells all. Come on, man. That, I mean, and we we was trying to let you down easy, man. Then you trying to go after the general, man. I'm like, oh man, this is the same dude that we helped. That's no honor whatsoever, man. That's no honor, man. Someone's watching your back like that. We, you was a total stranger, man. And we, we treated you like we've been knowing you all of our lives. You ungrateful son of a gun, man. Your woman probably don't even like that, man. You, that woman is, uh, that girl, that young girl's afraid of you, man. That's the only reason she's around you. Your spirit is off as hell, man. That's why the Most High is dealing with you like he's dealing with you, man. You don't realize that, man. You got demons on you, man. That's why you're moving like that. Come. You got demons on you, man. I'm going to say son of a bitch. I ain't going to hold back on that one. Ain't no son of a gun. Because you, you ain't even about that life like that. You ain't real. Ain't nothing about you. Ain't nothing about you real, but <laughs> but them dang on demons you got up in. That's it. Because when you receive love, you responded with hate. And can nobody help that? That's between you and the most high. Now, let, let, let's deal with this common law stuff, man. Let me show you how this stuff correlate the secure party creditor process this court system this is why i say if you don't understand this bible if you're not living this out right and exact you're gonna get a little bit of remedy but you have no protection man see the most high protects me man He protects me, man. He put a wedge around me like Job. So when demons come like Malachi, man, I'm fully protected. They always send one of us, man, to try to infiltrate us. Always a Judas, man. There's always a Judas, man. Now, there's a lot of mysticism, right? And confusion surrounding the crucifixion of Yahusha. Yahweh Shai and the resurrection. So much that we lose sight of the fact that Yahweh Shai of Nazareth was a man tried before a court of men, just like they send you into the courts under the laws of men. What? We forget that he was convicted and executed as a man. See, the supreme Awahim son came to earth as a man so man could learn to walk and live like the supreme Awahim. 
So we, we forget that he was tried as a man. So when we, when we study, if you really read the gospels and you study the trial of a Mashiach, it, it matches today's modern courtroom stories in the so-called human justice system. We, we approach this subject with the mindset of a briefcase, not a theologian, right? But I urge each and every one of you under the sound of my voice to research your own theological aspects of the events as they unfolded. Because I believe it leads to better spiritual insight if you have like a lawyer's or should i say a lawful view of the process of the law that literally culminated in the death of yahweh shai on calvary on that state that they tell you was a cross. When we think about it, when we read the gospels on the onset or the outset, I wanna emphasize that I don't believe that like a lot of people push, oh, well, yeah, the Jews killed them. Okay, you're entitled to that. There's only a few powerful men in Israel, the chief priests of the nation that was responsible for the miscarriage of Yahweh Shah's justice, the Sanhedrin. They envy them. And to understand the enormity of that miscarriage we have to ex examine the laws of the Israelites. <clears throat> Under the provision of the Israelites law, there could literally be no conviction for a capital offense based on the testimony of less than two witnesses. Someone get me that in the law. Someone get Matthew 18, um, 15, but it's written in the law as well. It's in Deuteronomy. Let me. Um, God. Where's my man Daryl at? The book of Matthew, uh, Matthew, chapter 18, verse 16. But if he will not hear thee. It's so like here. Um, um, now, verse 15. It said, uh, um, verse 15. Um, okay. um, Taurus, get Deuteronomy, the Borium 19, verse 15. All right. Start, yeah, 19, verse 15. Go ahead, um, Yashabin. Count the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. See that? Okay, now the first, why, why am I bringing this up? Judas was one man. So the, according to the law, it needs to be in the mouth of one or two witnesses, two or more, not just one man. Judas was just one man. 
Bring out what you got, um, Taurus. Deuteronomy nineteen and fifteen. Nineteen and fifteen. One second. All right. Deuteronomy nineteen and fifteen. Oh, one second. One witness shall not rise up against a man for. Read that again. Read that again. What, what, what is it, what is the Most High saying? His law. In Deuteronomy. 19 and 15, one witness shall not rise up against a man. So we see that it was wrong what they did. Judas was only one witness. One witness. Read on. For, for any inquinity or for any sin, and any sin that he sins at the mouth of two witnesses. See that? Or, so any kind of sin that has to be at least two witnesses. We know. Con, or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. See that? So one is not enough, man. One is not enough, not according to our laws. See, we had a magnificent system of law. So now we got a problem. Now we got a problem. So under the Israelite law, under the laws of the Torah, we see that one witness is the same as no witness, according to what we just read. One is not enough. One man witnessing something is the same as no witness at all. If there were only two witnesses, both had to agree in every particular to the last detail. According to what we read, not according to the Torah, according to the Torah. Under the law, the accused had the right to employ counsel. Understand that? That that's that's in unison with their Sixth Amendment. That's where the Sixth Amendment came from. You have a right to an attorney and a child by jury. They got that from our law. So if you can't afford a lawyer, an attorney, one had to be appointed for him. That's a U.S. Supreme Court decision, man. Gideon versus Wainwright. That gave rise to our public defender system. Public defender. What is the hell is a public defender? That's someone that went to law school. They barely passed the bar exam, so they remain a public defender because most likely no law firm wants to um, hire them. Yet you trust them to defend you. That's what a public defender is. He scored very low on his law exam. He barely made it in, and so no... No law firm usually wants to hire a public defender. But you go out, they give you that. So if you can't afford the lawyer, the court appoints you a public defender. Do you understand? But in reality, this was the practice of the courts at least 2,000 years ago. See, under the Mosaic law, Right? The Torah. An accused could not be required to testify against himself. Do they not have that in their system today? God. All laws in their system came from our laws. What is that? That's the Fifth Amendment. That's what their Fifth Amendment came from. All of this stuff came from this Bible. So you Israel, oh, you tell us, shut me door. Shut the hell up, man. You don't even know what's going on. What does the scripture say about you answering a matter before you have any knowledge of it? So we already see that the Sixth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment came from the Torah. Fifth Amendment, no person shall be compelled to, in any criminal case, to be a witness against himself. That's, that's where they got the concept, I'll take the fifth. 
That's where they got the concept of that from. You can't testify against yourself. They got that from since the time of Moses. Voluntary confession was not competent for conviction under the Israelite law. The burden of proof is still on the state to establish that a confession, if given, was given freely, was given voluntarily and intelligently. The system requires the constables on patrol to, re to read the, the Miranda warning, right? To the accused so that the court can determine if an admission was freely, voluntarily, and intelligently made. If confession is made after the Miranda is hard and then understood, the confession could actually be admitted into the record. But it was not so in the days of Hamashiach, under the Israelite law, under the Mosaic law. The Mosaic law admitted no confession. Believing the state could never rely on which a person said from his own mouth. And under the Mosaic law, circumstantial evidence was not admissible into the record. But in these courts today, you rarely see a damn case where circumstantial evidence is not used. That's mostly what they use. Evidence in most court cases today are entirely circumstantial evidence. People getting locked up on that, man. That's not law. This is hearsay evidence. They suppose they have a rule against admitting testimony of a witness who are not in the court to be examined. I tell people this all of the time. Was the person that wrote a testimony present in the court? They said, no. I said, well, how come you didn't have it dismissed? The law requires that if someone wrote a statement, they need to be in the court. Otherwise, you could object to it. Because you have a right to question your accuser. If you wanted to cross-examine someone, you can't cross-examine the letter. So you object and have that stricken from the record. Case dismissed. There's no witness. Oh, the attorney or oh, the state of um, um, Florida is picking up. Okay. Why'd you that? Was the state of Florida present? Au contraire then everything that the state of Florida say will be hearsay evident. I'm going to object to that right away. It's not admissible into the record. That's how it should work. But people don't think. They just, they freak out. They get nervous. So hearsay evident. This hearsay evidence has literally gobbled up the rule of original protection for the accused. The presumption of innocence that this system recognized today, their so-called law, that an accused is presumed innocent until his guilt has been established by evidence to the exclusion beyond a reasonable doubt is not even acknowledged anymore. But where did that come from? That came from our laws. That came from the Mosaic laws. It came from the laws of the Israelites that you're innocent until proven guilty. That was the rule when Hamashiach was unjustly crucified. Dealing with modern law, right? The accused in a capital case
during Hamas Yacht's time was required to be prosecuted and tried in the daytime and in public. This is where this man's system and their constitution states a public trial. This is why it's done publicly. No evidence could actually be presented into the record unless the accused was present. What did that do? That established Esau's system today of the right of the accused to be confronted by the witness that's testifying against him. You have a right to question your accuser. This is where they get it from. You understand? So this established that present day, you have a right to question your accuser. You're going to testify against me. I have a right to cross-examine you. If you did not meet that right, what you're saying is not admissible into the record. What does, what does the Ten Commandments say? Um, Taurus, thou shalt not be a fool's witness. That's right. What is the system? Well, that's where they came up with perjury. That shall not be a fool's witness. Lying in court was perjury. That's the seventh. Oath or no oath. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, according to the Most High, whether you take an oath or not, lying is perjury. There was also two other deterrents to perjury. First being any witness in a capital case who committed perjury was subject himself to the death penalty. You understand that? And the next thing was that if the accused in a capital case was convicted, the witness were required to attend the execution. He had to watch it. But under the provisions of law, witness generally, they generally choose their words cautiously. The Sanhedrin, man. These were the people that was responsible for the mo for Yahweh Shai's death. Caiaphas was a high priest on that time. The great Sanhedrin, that was considered to be the Israelite Supreme Court. That was the only court with jurisdiction over crimes punishable by death. The Sanhedrin, and they were wicked. See what they've done with Mashiach? The establishment of the Sanhedrin is ascribed to Moshe, Moses. It was a court of 70 members. 70 members made up of a high priest who was considered to be the presiding role, judge, right? Then they had a religious chamber of 23 chief priests. Don't believe me, go and do some research on yourself. Then they had a law chamber of 23 scribes. Scribes wrote things down. And then they had a popular chamber of 23 elders. And so it was this court that Yahweh Shah referred when he said he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. He knew that their decision would be to kill him. He knew that. You guys know um, the precept I'm talking about? When he said the son of man must suffer many things, by the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes. This is who I'm talking about. That's who he's talking about, man. Someone get that, Matthew um, 16, verse 13. The book of Matthew, that's it, you all. Chapter 16, verse 13. When Yahweh came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, 
Who do they say that I am? Come on, whom do they who whom do men say that I that I the son of man am? Verse 14. He said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, Yachanan the Baptist, some say Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, Mashiach, son of the living Allahan. Khan, jump, jump down to verse 21. Let's get to the meat of it. Khan, book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 21. For that time forth began Yahweh to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. See that? And be raised again the third day. See, he knew that they was going to um, um, plan to crucify him. He knew that. He warned the disciples about that. And Peter, uh, uh, no, I would never betray you. He said, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. See, extreme care was used to select the judges of that great court of the Sanhedrin. Each had to be at least 40 years old. How the hell are you saying you're a priest, man? You're 26. <laughs> don't believe me? Go and read the Bible yourself, man. They're showing well, you that guy don't know a damn thing, man. To be a scribe or a priest or an elder, you had to be at least 40 years old. Huh? Yeah, and people that really study the Bible, they know I'm not lying, man. I can't make this up, man. And you had to be gradually increasing in dignity. And each had to be a person of impeccable integrity. Boy, that knocks your ass out of the box right there because you're a hypocrite. You had to have impeccable integrity. Nobody can't say nothing bad about you, man. You had to be high, held in the highest esteem by your fellow man. Why? Because the Sanhedrin, them, those members, they acted as both judge and jury. Right? They didn't have a separate jury. You told almost 70 men here. Why would they need one? Any member with an entrance of personal knowledge of the parties or facts was required to disqualify himself. This is this is where they get this is why see today in the um modern juries, they ask you, do you know him? Because if you know the person, they won't let you be in the um jury. This is where this they got that from the Sanhedrin, man. If you knew anyone personally, you had to be disqualified. Esau got all his stuff from us, man. And you tell me we're not supposed to study this? This is why I say if you study the Bible, if you really know the Bible, then you'll be very successful with common law, with secure party creditor. Most of you really don't know the Bible, man. You're faking the funk, man. You pump faking. Because you will know this. But how can you know except you have a teacher? See, the court had to decide the question of guilt or innocence solely on evidence that was presented in the court. The Sanhedrin, they was charged under the, the, the rabbinical law with the duty to protect and to defend the accused. They didn't do that to Hamashiach. Now, no member could act as an accuser or a prosecutor. See, the law required the court to give the accused person the benefit of a doubt. They don't do that in the system, man. And you were supposed to assist the accused to establish his innocence. They don't do this in these courts, man. 
They go to an extreme. These damn attorneys go to the extreme to prove you guilty. The, the trials, if you study the trial of Amash Yap, is very similar to the trials today. See, following the preliminary hearing, right? A summary of evidence was given by the judges and spectators were literally removed from the courtroom and the robe proceed to the ballot. Now, majority was sufficient to convict or acquit. If a majority voted to acquit, the trial was over. It was over right then and there. And the defendant was completely exonerated. OJ, if the glove don't fit, acquit. OJ, <laughs> if it don't fit, acquit. OJ, when he planned that thing out, wasn't Yashib? Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he put a damn smirk on his face. The only time he showed any emotions in the court, man. OJ knew he had him then. That lying, no good son of a dun. He know he killed that woman, man. He got away with murder, man, but they left his ass broken and they got him later. If it don't fit, acquit. See, during the Sanhedrin, man, under our laws, no announcement of the verdict could be made that same day. The court literally had to adjourn for a full day. The robes were permitted to go to their homes, but they were not allowed their minds to be preoccupied by any business pursuit or social activities. They were supposed to devote their entire time to the solemn consideration and reconsideration of the evidence and then return the next day to the ballot again. And the second day at the ballot, the robes voting for acquittal could not change his vote. But any robe, any judge who at first found the accused guilty could change his vote to innocent. See, this is how our law worked. And during all of this time, throughout the duration of this time, the accused was still presumed to be innocent. Why did Esau take this out, man? Why he take this out of his court system? I tell you why. Someone get Job 9.24. I'll show you why Esau took it out. Someone get Job 9.24. The Bible tells us why he took it out. Thumbs up as you come in the room, man. On the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That's why he took it out. This is why it's taken out. This is why it's not in the court. This is why you're not um, presumed innocence anymore. Because the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. That's why. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Hey, hold on. The scriptures say the Hamashiach. Is a so called black man. He ain't even a light skinned black man, Taurus. He's dark skinned. Because if you burn anything, what color does it take? If I, if I take this piece of white paper right now and burn it, it's going to turn black. Uh, anything you burn turns black. So brass, if is it burned in a furnace, would be black. That's why it's taken out, because the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He changed the forces of the judges thereof. He didn't paint the angels white. Little naked angels with bow and arrows. He made them white. That's not, how, that's not what the book says. That's not how the Bible describes him. 
He made Hamashiach white. That's hate, man. Then you don't want anyone to discuss it. You don't want anyone to talk about it. That's pure hate. Does an angel do that? No. A devil does that. A deceiver. That's what a devil is. A devil is a deceiver, man. There's another um, peculiar provision of the Israelite law that's of essential importance. And for that is for a unanimous verdict of guilty resulted in acquittal of the defendant. And this arose from the court's duty to protect the defend the accused. In the Mosaic law, man, the Mosaic law held that since some members of the court had to interpose a defense for the accused, a unanimous verdict of guilty indicated that no one had done this. And they would say that could only be a conspiracy against the accused. He had no friend, he had no defender. And such a verdict was invalid and had the effect of an acquittal. System is not like this. Esau's system is not like this, man. He took what he wanted and he made it demonic. He turned it into a business of commerce. See, Israel was not a democracy, family. We did not have a democracy, demonocracy. Israel was not a democracy with church and state separate, but it was a theocracy with the church and state intertwined as one. Now, many of you, many, many believe that the chief priest brought about Yahweh Shah's illegal arrest and trial. And that is why they bribed Judas. And that is why they alone, who were threatened by the public teachings of Hamashiach, it was them alone who sought to have him put to death. You hear a lot of people tell, oh yeah, yeah, uh, the Jews killed, shut up, man. It was the Sanhedrin's that planned this thing out, man. The arrest of Hamashiach, the, the arrest of Yahweh was illegal, man, because it came at night. That violates the scriptures. God. That violates the law of the Torah. And it was through the effect of the efforts of a conspirator, Judas Melakai Issachar. Judas Issachar. That was in violation of the rabbinic, rabbinical law. That was not as a result of any legal mandate. Again, that's in violation of the Masonic Code. See, the Roman guards who arrested Hamashiach Yahawashai in the Garden of Gethsemane and brought him bound into the judgment hall of the high priest. They hadn't been issued any lawful warrant. The court was convened at night. Why? That was against Israelite laws. Why was the court convened at night? Why? Because that's further evidence of the conspiracy against Yahweh Shai by the priest whose hypocrisy the carpenter had publicly denounced. But they say, isn't that the carpenter's son? Yeah, you damn right. The carpenter publicly denounced all of them. He called them the children of the devil. 
Someone get that, man. Someone get Matt, um, St. John's 8. Start reading that verse 40. He called them devils. Hamashiach called the Sanhedrin devils. And that's what they were. And we still got a lot of devils in this day and age. He called them devils, man. That's what my man Daryl Thornhill at, man. Daryl Thornhill, where you at, King? He's on his way to the house. I called. Oh, I, I, I texted. Right. Yeah. You said first John's in eight, King? No, not first John. St. John's. Eight. Start reading that verse 40. We're going to read down to verse 44. John, the book of John, that first John. Book of Yachanan, John, chapter 8, verse 40. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of Yahweh. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even Yahweh. Go, go, go to the top of that, Yahshua, so they can get the understanding. Because some people may not know this on precept right here. Go up higher than it. Come. Because they're trying to say, oh, we, we have but one father, Abraham. All right, so I'm uh, I'm gonna start from verse uh, verse thirty one. Right. Then said Yahweh Shah to those Jews was believed on him. If ye continue, if ye if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples. Indeed. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this is it. This is it. If ye continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Then answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and will never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Yahweh shall answer them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is servant of is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. Because my word have no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen of your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Yahweh said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of Yah. This did not Abraham. Basically, Abraham didn't do this. Verse 41. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father. Even Yah. Yahweh Shah said unto them, If Yahweh were your father, ye would love me. For I proceed forth and came from Yahweh. Neither came I from myself, but he sent me. 
Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him. We call them devils, man. He said, you have your father, the devil. You call when them he, devils, man. Come. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. He's the father of the lie, man. And we get a lot of them, you know, so-called Israelites. It's of their father, the devil, man. See, under the Lord, the sin, he's in the first step. Should have been an arraignment of the prisoners. Then the reading of the charges against him open in court. And this, this record, if you guys are doubting what I'm saying, the record, including the writings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Josephus, it mentions no arraignment took place. The record says that the court sought false witness against Yahweh to put him to death. But first they found none. Though many false witnesses came. The prophecy is clear. Someone get that. What is that? Um, Psalms 50. What is that? 53 and 11. False witnesses did rise up. Rise up. That's the prophecy of Hamashiach, man. That's what it was talking about. Con 35 and 11. Con. Yeah, con, con. Psalms 35 and 11. Lay to my charge things I knew not. When we get that to us, Psalms 35, verse 11. Come on, I'm on it. Psalms 35, verse 11. 11. Come. False witness did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. See that? See, and there was perjury. There was perjuries being shouted out in the crowd, but they were unwilling to risk that terrible consequences of lying against a man accused of a capital a crime. But at least two false witnesses, when we read the book of um, Matthew, it tells us at least two false witnesses came up. And again, in the book of Mark, it adds that the witnesses did not agree. The witnesses was in disagreement. The first testified on the charge of blasphemy against Hamashiach. He said, I'm able to destroy the temple. And the second said that Yahweh Hamashiach said, I will destroy the temple. See, they couldn't even agree. And there was no witness but these two men, but they did not agree. They were false witnesses. That's fulfilling the prophecy in the book of um, Psalms 35 and 11. Yahweh Shah was entitled to acquittal without being quite questioned, man, to his defense, but they didn't allow that to take place. They wanted him dead. They wanted him crucified. He couldn't testify against himself. Why were they trying to make him do it? Did you say? That you a son of God? Hold on, you're trying to get this man to testify against himself. That's against the Mosaic law. But the high priest, Caiaphas, he called on Hamashiach to make a defense. That's contrary to the law. He knew that was contrary to the law. The high priest stood up in the midst 
And he asked Yahawashah, answered thou nothing? What is it these witnesses say against you? Hamas Yach didn't say nothing. See, instead of protecting and defending the accused, which was actually required by our laws, the high priest himself became an accuser, utterly violating the rules and procedures. He said, I adjourn thee by the living Awahan, he shouted, that thou tells us whether thou be the Christ, the son of Yahweh. That's what he said, man. Caiaphas said that. He was ahead of the Sanhedrin that year. Now, he was supposed to be a protecting the accused. These men really wanted Hamashiach dead. Someone get that real quick. Matthew 23, Salakia, Matthew 26 and 63. Hamashiach didn't say anything. He held his peace. The scriptures say he found, he, he, he held his peace. Let, let, start reading that verse 60. Matthew 26, verse 60. Come. Book of Matthew, Matiwa, chapter 26, verse 60. But found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of Yahweh and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, answers thou nothing? What is it? Which these witnesses against thee? But Yahweh Shah held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living Yahweh Allah, that thou tell us whether thou be the Amashiach, son of Yahweh. Yahweh Shah said unto him, Thou hast said. Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes. So say you. Khan. So say you. Thou hast said. Thou hast said. So say you. <laughs> said. So say you. He didn't admit to anything. He gave him a conditional acceptance. He didn't admit to anything. Are you the son of um, God? So say you. Thou hast said. So say you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It was the black preacher saying, wow. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, don't they, Taurus? <laughs> yeah, man. The black preachers, wow. They Jeez, still playing that piano. Still your dollar. Yep. Just be singing all day. Nobody learn nothing. Learn how to be wicked. Yeah. Then he's sleeping with some man's wives. So Hamashiach remains silent. And one version of the gospel, he said, if I answer thee, if I answer you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you questions, you will not answer me. Finish reading that thing out, Yashabin. He asked him again, are you the son of Yahweh? Come. 
Thou has said. Then the high priest ran his clothes, saying, He has spoken, he has blasphemy. spoken blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And what further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. See that? So the rest of the men in this so-called awesome court, after they heard the word spoken by Caiaphas, they unlawfully confirm his judgment, shouting, he's guilty of death. He's guilty of death. So the first hearing before the Sanhedrin concluded about three o'clock Friday morning. The court adjourned only till daybreak. Now, through the law, they were required, each of them, to take at least 24 hours before a second hearing, a full day before a second hearing but they returned only in a few hours later at dawn. How do we know? Because it's written in the book of St. Luke. St. Luke tells us, St. Luke says, as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and they led him to council. So as soon, the, the, the court wasn't supposed to convene for a full 24 hours. They broke again the Mosaic law. Why? Because they want Amashiach dead, man. They wanted him dead. No witnesses were called. Again, the law was violated by them requiring Yahweh to answer the repeated questions, are you the son of Yahweh? And what did he do? He answered them again. So say you. You say I am. But then he added, hereafter you will see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power of, Yah of Allah. And when he said that, Read, 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 read that, Ami um, Ashabin. Keep reading. When he said that, the court shouted. They went crazy. Come. Saying, prophesy to us. Oh, you want me to go back up? Um. Come. When you say here after you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power. Come. Uh, Book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 64. Yahweh shall say unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. See that? Now, I'm hit you with something, man. Under the... um. The laws of the Israelites, man, the Torah, the Tanakh, the law of death was supposed to be by stoning. That was a proper sentence for a capital offense. The Israelite people did not crucify. That method of inflicting the death penalty was Greco-Roman. That was by the Greeks and Romans in origin. The Israelites put capital convicts to death by stoning. 
by beheading or by, by strangulation in accordance with the nature of the crime. Death by stoning was prescribed by blasphemy. But the Roman, the Roman army occupying Jerusalem at the time had power to pronounce and carry out death sentences. So the Sanhedrin merely had authority to bring its accusations before the Roman magistrate or the military governor, who then had the duty to review the entire proceeding as a separate trial court with the sole power to determine the matter. And so after that, in the morning, the chief priests, they consulted with the elders and the scribe and they bound Yahweh and they carried him away. Then they delivered him to Pilate. When they gave him the Pilate, Pilate didn't even follow the Roman system of allure. He did not exercise the independent judgment according to the law, but he gave in to the political pressures from the Sanhedrin. And this was violating the very law that he was charged to uphold. And Pilate's story is a story is an example of why judges should always be free from political pressure, but they're not. Judges are supposed to be free to decide cases solely on the law and on evidence. But they don't do it that way. So Pilate, At the time, Pilate owned a legal duty to review all evidence and then produce a fair judgment. He was a good judge until his job security was threatened by these politicians. What did the priests do? The priest took Hamashiach outside a Pilate's palace. They couldn't enter. Why? Because they would be defiled if they entered into Pilate's palace. Why? Because it was the feast of the Passover. So they wasn't out, uh, allowed to go into their um, a, a damn non-believer's palace. And so Pilate went outside to them saying, remember what he said? He said, what accusations bring you against this man? Why did Pilate ask that? This is important that we know this. Why did Pilate ask that? Because it shows that Pilate's intention to take the case up as a trial judge from the beginning. He started with the trial itself. He didn't ask, what do you have convicted this man of doing? But he asked, what are the charges? These priests, they know the importance of Pilate's question. So they gave him an indirect answer. What do they say? They say, if he was not a malefactor, we would have never delivered him to you. So in other words, Pilate asked, what do you, what are your charge against this man? And the priest answered, if he was not guilty, then he wouldn't be here. See, I didn't, I didn't give him a direct answer. But what did Pilate see? Pilate saw this as an attempt to limit his jurisdiction. And this made him angry. So 
So what did Pilate told him? He said, you take him then and you judge him according to your law. I don't want to do anything with this. Then the priests, they was forced to admit, hey, man, it's not lawful for us to put a man to death. These priests are breaking the law, man. I understand the dilemma that they're in. Because if they presented Amashiach as a man convicted of blasphemy on the testimony of only two witnesses who didn't agree, then Pilate, he will reverse that verdict. So, of course, if they reported Yahweh Shah was convicted by ununanimous vote, Pilate were in a verdict of acquittal. So these guilty priests, these guilty priests of Israel, they presented Yahweh Shah to Pilate on a new charge. They trumped up on the spot and they called it treason. They say treason against Caesar. He said, we found this fellow perverting the nation, forbidding other people to pay taxes. Then Pilate called Yahweh Shah inside the palace privately. And he said, are you the king of the Jews? Yahweh Shah asked Pilate, he said, I want to know the origin of the new charge. He said, did you say these things of yourself? Or did others tell you to say it? And Pilate said, your own nation of chief priests delivered you to me, charged with treason. See, it's one thing for an Israelite to accuse a Rome, a Roman of treason, and for a Roman to accuse an Israelite but we have right here the most prominent Israelites in Israel accusing one of their own countrymen of the crime of treason against Rome. What did Mashiach say? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He kept giving them kennel orphans. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Then he told him, everyone that is of the truth, hear my voice. And Pilate said, what is the truth? You know, my shot didn't give him no, no reply. He just stood there silent. The lamb led to the slaughter by the liars. And so then Pilate went back outside where the priests were, according to St. John, and then he pronounced his first empathetic acquittal of the carpenter's son. He said, I found no fault in this man, not at all. So, so far, Pilate has actually followed the law to the letter. The law was good. The law would have delivered Yahweh Shai, but for the persistence of these evil priests who cared nothing for the law, by which they themselves sought to rule the land and all of its inhabitants. It was utterly intolerable to these enemies of the truth for their murderous plot. The priests, they let out a roar of indignation. 
They said his teachings stir up the people throughout our land from Galilee to this very city. So the charge was sedition. It was less horrendous than treason. But it also required a proof of a corrupt motive to convict. Pollock ignored this charge. What did he do? He said, hey, send him back to Herod, man. Pollock ignored the charge. He said, send him to Herod, man. Pilate saw the chance to shift responsibility to Herod. Herod had jurisdiction over um, sedition charges. Yahweh Shah was a Galilean. So the priests approved this move because they thought Herod would do anything to gain their favor. So Yahweh Shah was dragged to Herod's place. Now, both of these charges of treason and sedition was renewed at Herod's place. Remember that story, man? Taurus? I'm not sure about that story. I mean, I'm sure I've heard of it, but I'm not sure I remember that one. He brought him back from here, right, and sent him back to pilot again. I'm gonna drop a link in the room. See if anyone have anything to say. Anyone have anything you want to bring up? Uh, I thought Thorne would have been on by now. He was on his way to the house. I got into something. Man. Anyone have anything? You could kindly click on the link and come in the room. Uh, there's over 30 of you guys out there. Did you learn something new? What say you about the connection between our modern day um, laws and or so-called policies, procedures and statutes with the most highs laws? Statues and commandments. This is your remedy right here, people. Your remedy comes from within. God, being shown the truth. If you can't see it after this point, it just may not be for you.
Forrest Bank. What's up, King? Yeah, we definitely got to get up on this um, on this story here, man, because this 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 is the story that uh, that catches folks' attention to see how it actually lines up, man, with uh, what's going on every day in the court systems over here. Right. They go straight to adjudication, man. The same thing they did to, they did worse, actually, to Hamashia. Um, yeah, it's happening every day, man. Uh, people going to court and they're getting straight adjudicated, man. Um, cause, cause they agree. It's just wild how he put out there. He said, "Woe unto you lawyers!" Way back then, so they got they've gotten plenty of practice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This definitely um goes hand. It's amazing how this goes hand in hand with you know the court system today and it actually works right but i don't understand how people don't um just by you know him breaking it down that should spark your mind to want to like oh i gotta open this bible up right now because it's like it's not fake man it's definitely not fake and it's not made up because it goes with the law today that's how powerful that is, man. And a lot of people, they're breaking the ninth. I think it's the ninth commandment. Thou shalt not, um, thou shalt not bear false witness, right? I believe that's the ninth commandment, if I'm not mistaken. And when you go into the courtroom and you go in by your corporate, you know, City trust or you know whatever you want to call it straw man name you're already breaking the ninth commandment so Yahweh was not hearing you man by bearing false witness because that's not you and again you need at least two or three you feel me and that's why you know Yahweh was like yo you said it you said it he was basically like just not consenting, but just like, you know what I mean? Not being silent at the same time. Right. And that's right. exactly how you do it, man. And he's done it back then. And all these years, you know, we should be on, we should be ahead of the game now if you really following Christ like. So I think that's beautiful because the same way it's written in the scripture. So how the same way it works today in this core system. So I think it's beautiful. We praise to Yahweh. Uh, yeah, they, they judge Hamashiach even before his trial, man. He never got a trial. They judge him before that. He was already prejudged. Uh, and I was really digging how you brought that whole conspiracy to light. Um, when I was uh, in the congregation of the Jehovah's, um, I, I never really got proper understanding of that. Like, I thought it was just a court trial. And, you know, Yahweh Shah just pretty much, you know, stayed honorable. And then they just, you know, said, all right, well, y'all take them and y'all kill them. But you know, to give that breakdown, the Sanhedrin and how they literally had to pretty much conspire and just fabricate whatever before taking him to Pilate and Herod. And then even in that, going back and forth, every step of the way, Yahweh, you know, was just like, so say you. Again, if I, you know, try and defend myself, y'all not going to believe me. And even now I'm telling you the laws that we're supposed to be following and you're not doing it. So, you know, you aren't the sons of Abraham, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, tying in Deuteronomy like that. Yeah, that just that really that really expanded, you know, what what I what, what little information I had known about Yahweh's trial. 
And uh, the other day when Daryl was on talking about some of your videos, I'm not sure if, if it's the series of videos, but um, on your channel, you have some videos called The Trial of Christ, A More Profound View. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's like a three-part segment. I don't know if that's the one, but I remember catching that one a couple of times too. And even that was very enlightening. Um, but yeah, man, people people really got to pay attention to the Bible. Like this whole country is built off of it. You know, <laughs> the more awareness I've gained through what you've taught, like I can clearly see that everything is ripped from our our way of life, our culture. And to just you know crap on it when people say they believe in the scriptures it's it's just thoroughly an insult not only to themselves but to the most high so that that was very enlightening you know the water that was a very good very good lesson and they, they like to call themselves christians i'm a good red-blooded christian american they won't do anything that the bible tells them to do right yeah another thing that um that you, you put spot on was um when people because I heard that before they said oh the Jews the very young the very young Jews crucified Christ the Jews did it but you know you actually you, you kind of like broke that down how it's not true because a, a true you know a true Israelite follows the scriptures and if, if and they don't bear false witness you feel me and they keep the laws right so right. it's they not true Jews then man because Yah my Mashiach my, my was not guilty at all. So a real, you know, a real Israelite wouldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? So that makes sense, man. And another I have a question. The the you said the who did it? It wasn't the Jews. Who did it? What, what was that? You said it, instead it wasn't the Jews that um put Christ on the, you know, on the on the on, on Yeah, the it was wall. just it, it was just the Sanhedrin. Those were the higher echelon. And who are they today? Well, we don't have them um, today. The, those were the high priests and all those people. Okay. Like these yeah. men, um, they presided inside the temples, man. <clears throat> and Cyprus. Okay. I mean, this is, why, this is why this court system wear like priestly robes and all of that, because it all came from our heritage. It's the priests that people would go before, man, not a judge. The whole judge thing came from the priest. Right. Yeah, man, so you hit that spot on, man, because that actually, that that that, awake, that should awaken everybody, and people should stop saying that now after they hear that, because it wasn't his own people that did it, because his own people would be keeping the law. So that breaks that. They're ignorant, man. Just like they say, um, a lot of Edomites be saying, oh, black sold blacks into slavery. Your own people sold you. You don't know a damn thing except for what your um, your programmers taught you. How you want to say that stupid stuff? Your own, your own people in slavery. Shut up, man. You know what you're talking about. Those are the Hamites that did that. Yeah. Also, too, for from experience, I remember um one time, you know, I wasn't as sharp, you know, with with the law, you know. what I'm saying I was still learning. I remember one time I went to court. It was a while too, and I was learning a little bit, you know. what I'm saying we talked to Doc, but I didn't get it fully breaking down. And uh, before before I knew what I knew now, um. I remember I went to court and I didn't I wasn't on time to pay a fine or something. And I was like trying to stand, you know, as a man and put my status and all that. And I kind of fell flat on my face, right? And they locked me up, right? But at the same time, I knew in my heart who I was and I never consented, right? But being that there was a contract 
before what I knew now to pay a fine, right? That I, I I didn't know how to reverse it. So I was still on the I was still compelled under contract at the time while I was learning how to get out of it. So when they threw me in the box or whatever, I still was like, yo, that's not me. That's not my name. I'm not a warrior. <laughs> they, real talk, man. Real talk. They was looking at me crazy, man. They was looking yeah. at me real crazy, man. <laughs> they wanted, you know how you go in, you go into jail and they got to stick this needle. They got to give you, a, I think it's called a TP shot, something like that, to make sure before you get into population, to make sure you ain't got no virus or something, whatever the, whatever you call it. And I was like, nah, you ain't putting that in me. And the, and, and, and the nurse the nurse like, well, you got it. I'm like, I'm not a ward of state and that's not me because they had to confirm your name before they do anything to you. And I kept telling them, that's not me, man. So they put me in the uh, the medical room, man. And um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were trying to say I was crazy. I'm like, Roger, that I'll be crazy. I don't care between you. Like, <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, they had me in there and they had like, I guess, a, a, like a kind of a psychiatrist in there to come check up on me and see if I need medication or something's wrong with me. You know, um, I was actually fast. I didn't eat nothing in there, man. I, I drank straight water and I had it. the only thing I ate that they gave me probably on the third day was an apple. And then there was like a little bit of light from the window and I would just put my face towards the sun. But long story short, man, I stuck I stuck with it, man. And on the I, I, I was in there for like seven days on the sixth day. They um they sent me to the hospital and all that, and then I got I got discharged. But at the last day, man, I ate good, man. I had you know brown rice with broccoli, and and I was good, man. And they, and they let me go right then and there, and I was just like, all right. And then that's when I kept watching your videos. And the next time I went to court, man, man, it was over. I was shutting them down, man. I was shutting them down. They tried to get the bailiffs to remove me. I told you that, right? Yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they they was they was they was like in shock, man. And I remember before that too, there was another time, um, like you said, man. I was like, yo, because they try to accuse me for trespassing or something. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And there's no, it, it's not true because nobody owns the property in that case, and there was only one witness. And then the the police never showed up. I had his name down and everything, man. I was waiting for him to show. He never showed up, man. I was like, you know, how how y'all gonna <laughs> make me plead when? You know, I have the right to face my accuser, man. And then, like, they had rescheduled court. But if I would have knew then, I would have been like, I would have objected to that. So, like, you know, it takes it takes a lot of uh, pressure and, 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 and physical time, man. They're going to throw you around and all that. But if you keep that faith, man, you keep the faith and you keep, you know, going over it and over it and over it, you're going to get it, man. You're going to get it, so. Uh, it's it's a lot of you know it's a it's a beautiful feeling, man. There's n nothing like that, you know. When you go on the court and, and, and people think you average, man, and they they think you don't know what you're talking about, and then you see the whole courtroom just look at you like, wow, did this man just do that? And then there's people in the back, in the back, like they waiting for the, they they want to see the police to slam me down and lock my ass up, and I prove them wrong, man. Like, so it, it, it's 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 a definitely a good thing, man. It's it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I remember you talking about it in Philly, man. Yeah. Kelly E, man, who's that? I thought that was Kelly Wells for a second. Kelly Wells injured her leg. Almost. Is really? that her? Yeah. That's why she didn't show up to the world now. Oh, wow. She says she can't walk. Well, not that you need to, but yeah, I've also I want to prayers off to her, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> to his bay. Was, um, standing tall, man. On old tank. Yeah, man. I had to, man. I, I got fed up, man. Like, I was just, I was getting tired, you know. Like, you know, I don't know if I told you, but, you know, since since a youngin', man, I've been, you know, 
I went to group homes, um, all that, man, residentials, even, even, um, I forgot the name of it now, um, juvenile, you know, around yeah. when Obama was elected, you know, I, I had to go through, through some shit, man, and it's just like, yo, uh, it hits you one day, and you're like, yo, what am I doing wrong? It can't be me, man, it's just like, you know, like, you know when you do wrong, and you're like, all right, I did wrong, but then it's like, when you're not doing wrong, you're trying to do better, they don't let you try to be better, man, they want to keep you in the system, man, and try to hold you accountable for something you did, and, and it's like, yo, the most high could forgive me, but who who are they like to keep me under their shit, man? Like I just got tired of it. I got fed up, man. I, I just I got real fed up, man. I had to figure this thing out, man. If it wasn't for you to this day, I'll probably be a, a dodo bird and still be going in and out and paying the fines. And and I'm grateful for you, man. Cause it, enough was enough, man. It's a miracle, run, man. <laughs> And then now, everything that I went through and I learned, you know what I'm saying? Now, now that I went through that, I could protect my children, you feel me? And my peoples, you know what I'm saying? Just by going through the experience and all that. So, you got to go through time. hell to come out right, man. Yeah. yeah. You, got, you got to, man. Yeah, um, you, it seemed like you was on point, though, when I pushed back. You. <laughs> you I said, man, this guy's a pretty sharp dude, man. This dude knows a lot. Seems like he was on point, man. Yeah, I, what I did you on first that. learn about this um, with, with the Moors? All right, so the Moors thing. The I'm Moors, saying the law. When did you first learn about that? The law or the Moors? I, I, never, I never really knew about the Moors like that. What happened was... um. It, it's strange. Um, one day I just wanted to give up meat, right? I just wanted to give up meat because, you know, my grandmother, um, her father is a, a so-called taindio. Taindio means wisdom in the language they used to use of what I what I've what I've learned. So far. I don't know if it's entirely true, but you know, a Native American, a Boricua, a taindio, you know. And what I learned that you know they used to they never really used to eat meat, and they were strong like Samson riding horses without horse saddles. You feel me? and walking barefoot and, and just doing amazing things in nature, you feel me, that a man can't withstand, you feel me? And they used to palil, pray over their food before, if they had to eat meat, you feel me? So the energy and, and whatever, you know, bad blood, it don't go inside you in, in, the, in the wrong manner. So I was into that. I heard stories of my grandmother, you know, my, my, my great uh, grandfather punched a horse in the face and it died. I was like, I don't condone to that. You know what I'm saying? I love my animals, but it was just amazing, like how you punch a horse in the face, and, and, and that's a strong animal. Feel me? So I was like really interested into the, you know, the lifestyles of the natives. You feel me? And PR when they was around, and um, I, I wanted to eat like them and all that. And they didn't really eat meat, man. They ate a lot of yucca, a, li a little. I heard I don't know if it's a lot of rice, but they used to have a pilon, which like you mash it down and make it creamy. Um, I just really wanted to learn. You know what I'm saying? how to um go back to as our ancestors was you know what i'm saying so i was going on youtube long story short and um i was trying to figure out how to get protein without eating meat and uh you know i ran into you know certain people and it, it was a more and he was talking about nature and i didn't know he was a more but I, I was watching his videos and i got real i got more interested in his other videos and eventually he, he told me who he was he was a, a a Shemitic more, a Shemitic more, but you know that was that was a long story. So and and then that's how I learned about the Moors. But I never got into um we never they the Moors I learned about you know from TLC we never got into Islam. They they don't do Islam or none of that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I never really um Islam I thought it was just when I uh, in Muslim you know the Quran I didn't know it was hand to hand. It, it, it it's strange man. It was just real interesting and I just kept trying to learn off the videos man of uh, um you know the Shemitic Moors and stuff and how they um you know they do you know how they you got you know how you said before you know you learn these people out here they they learn a little bit of five percent a little bit of the Quran a little bit of the Bible and they put it all together so yeah. like it sounded real interesting man and I, I wanted to know about it you know and that's how I got into it yep so they do Right, right. 
quickest way to teach somebody nothing is to try and teach them everything at once. Hey, Shalom, what's going on, Sean? All right, man, I guess it's time to bring this to a close, man. No one else seems to be coming through. They don't have the wherewithal to speak their truth. All right, man. Gonna um bring this to what oh, you got something, Sean, Kristen, you wanna bring up? Gonna bring this to an end. Until next time. Be sure to go ahead and cop that new book on the website or on Amazon. I posted it at the beginning of this chat room. I think um, <clears throat> it should be in Daryl probably ran into something. Con, I told him safety's paramount, so no more fault lines. That's for all as well. All right, so I'm going to say peace, man. Everyone be safe, man. Shalom. 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 Much appreciated. Shalom. Shalom.